So here's one other video in my little series here on the ideal gas law ratio equations, taking a look at just the algebra of the system. So I'm not going to re-go over how we get this particular thing, but assuming we have a closed system, then I could take a look at a constant temperature situation, which basically means that the T1 and the T2 are equal to each other. And this is also called isothermal. Now in that particular case, when I reduce this equation down, it gives me that P2, o, P2 times V2 over P1 times V1 equals 1. Because anytime you have a number over something it's equal to, like 3 over 3, it's equal to 1. And I can also multiply this out, P2 V2 equals P1 V1. And then we can use our tools of algebra to solve for any particular pressure, like maybe pressure 2, which would be P1 V1 divided by V2. And you could do the same sort of thing to solve for any one of these variables, depending on which things you're given. I've talked about in the other videos about the units, and in this case you have to make sure that P1 and P2 have the same units, and V1 and V2 have the same units. Now in physics, those are going to be pressures and meters cubed, which means both sides of the equation is actually a joule, which is why we use Pascal's in meters squared. However, you could also use atmospheres or liters or other alternate units for the pressure and the volume if both pressures are in atmospheres or both pressures are in liters. So in physics, we have the standard ones we always use, but we also have alternatives that can be used in some equations, like these ratio equations. Don't use it, however, back in the original equation, where we have to be much more precise with our units and watch my video on that as well to make sure you understand what units have to be used if you're doing just a single instance ideal gas law.